Wild, you're on the line. George in St. Louis. Hey, George. Hey, George. How are you? And I'm good doing evening, great. John. Am I good live? Evening. Yep, you're on. Let's switch off the microphone. There we go. Um, I'm George, and I'm the director of the International Society of Dowsers, and I just wanted to say, John, that uh, some of the things you, you've been saying tonight were just dead on and rang so true, uh, I could do nothing else but call you on the phone and uh, say that uh, we are just feeling some tremendous things that are very similar without going into specifics what you said because uh, it's fairly serious what's going on, on out there these days and I think uh, George a program like yours is just immensely important and uh, I just wanted to say thank you all and uh, that's really about it. I know, George, you might have an interest in dowsing from some of your previous guests, so uh, anytime you want to give a couple of rods a try and be able to put your mouth where your dowsing rods are, uh, more than willing to help out. <laughs> okay, George, thanks a lot. I don't know, you ever tried that, John? Well, uh, yes, and it is fascinating. It It is... Um, I mean, uh, there, there's that. Actually, everybody right now can play a little game. I'm sure some, some of the boys amongst the audience have played this game, which sort of relates to something of the electromagnetic sensitivity that sometimes can be found through dowsing. And sometimes, if you, you remember anybody played the game of putting a spoon on your forehead? Yeah. And it, it, you, can, you can take a coin even, even a 25-cent piece, and stick it right where the ancient Hindus and Buddhists say is your third eye little up from the middle of your nose bridge and if you stick it there it'll stick there you stick it anywhere else on your face it will not there's there's something of electromagnetic something that's going on and there's a lot of a lot of amazing things that some of the folk divinatory ideas and folk medicine have a grasp of that i think i think we're at the verge of a great frontier where uh, you know, we look about at space as a great frontier, but I think the greatest frontier and the eternal frontier of the human being is going to be the expansion of his inner consciousness, his or her inner consciousness. And once a lot of the dogma that's in science as much as in religion is sort of put aside so we can look with fresh eyes at this, we're going to discover in the future ways to actually... Uh, understand what we consider mysteries like dowsing and other things that really have something behind them let's go next to our first time caller line you're on the air with us hi there this is me i think so yes okay thank you i got a question for your guest um on the old testament before it was altered well lately it's been altered down to the 666 and all that stuff but in the old text Back then, they did not have a way of counting large numbers. They didn't have millions and billions and stuff like we have today. So, in the old text, it said, for those who have understanding and can count, because, of course, back then, a lot of people couldn't count. They didn't have mass skills. They were, it wasn't needed for the Balkan uh, population back then. But it said, for those who have understanding and can count, count these, as if it was breaking down into increments for people to understand because of course they could not understand that large of a number either it said count these 600 three scores in other words not like three score but 60 but three scores and to these add six and if you take a look at that it comes out to six zero zero two zero two zero two zero and then you add six which would be six zero zero two zero Two zero two six, which just mysteriously happens to be a uh, social security number. What do you think of that? Well, it's uh, I'm right now thumbing through my New English Bible translation right now, so that we can actually read uh, read what you said. And um, let's see. The I mean that's. You know, that's a question of the translation. I mean, you could you could say that it's a sum like that, but it's also uh, scholars have argued that uh, it is actually a number that you can add up by looking at Neron Kaiser uh, that also adds up because they did, before there was a number system, uh, Hebrew letters, Greek letters, Roman letters, 
obviously the, the, the most well-known of to us, had numerical value. And there are two spellings. Uh, Neron Kaiser is one, and Caligula Kaiser is the other for the 616 editions of Revelation. Um, the, they spell out, Caligula Caesar, or that, who was a Roman emperor, who tried to put a, a statue of Jupiter into the Holy Temple, a uh, uh, great blasphemy for the Jewish mystics. And uh, then there was Nero Kaiser. And when you also have a correlation. There was a story going on in classical times that Nero would be hit on the head and die and come back to life. So there's a connection beyond the numbers, which is also alluded to in the book of Revelation, that indicate to me that he's, he, he thought the beast was Nero, the emperor of Rome. Uh, so, and, you know, over the years, I, I could do a, I will do a book on 666 someday where I, I look at all the different ways people have number crunched and done their, I mean, it's, it's lost in the, in the translation of theomantics. Does Nestor, I'm sorry, John, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I, I, 